Hello, in this video we're going to explore the idea when we have two uh, normal random variates or variables and the covariance is zero, that implies they're independent and actually if they're independent that implies the covariance is zero. And So the theorem is if we have a multivariate normal random variable mean vector and variance covariance matrix uh, sigma where sigma is positive definite and we partition the, the y vector into y1 and y2 then the covariance between y1 and y2 equal to zero if and only if y1 and y2 are independent so if and only if means if this is true that's true and if this is true that's true so the proof of this we have to go both ways on the if and only if so first let's the expected value of y is equal to the expected value of y where we partitioned it which then you take the expected value into each component and we just get mu1 and mu2 which this vector is the same as this vector just partitioned now the variance of y is, is can be written like this and then and then the variance covariance matrix of this so sigma and this matrix are the same. It's just broken in, it's partitioned into four components. So let's prove it going this way. And what that means is we assume this is true and show that the covariance is zero. So let's let y1 and y2 be independent. And let's calculate the covariance matrix between y1 and y2. And that's done like this and there probably should be a tick in there somewhere we'll put it right there and so the expected value of this uh, matrix product and since Y1 and Y2 are independent we can break them apart but the expected value of each one of these is zero so the product is zero and so that says the covariance matrix is zero and that's what we just proved so going uh, left is was pretty straightforward now going right is a, you know one side is always easier than the other and so we picked the easy one first so let's go right so let's let the covariance between these two vectors be zero right we're assuming this is true and now we want to show they're independent um, so this implies that sigma 1, 2 and sigma 2, 2 are 0, right? So if we look at this matrix, this is 0 and this is 0. That's by, we're assuming that. Now since sigma is positive definite, a non-singular matrix R exists such that sigma is equal to R, R transpose. So whether that's the Chalitsky decomposition or the square root matrix or you you pick a method then an R exists. Now we're generically going to partition the R into R1 and R2 where this is the same so the the number of rows here is the same as the number of rows in Y. Here the same number in number of rows in R2 is the same number of rows in Y2. So then R transpose can be written like this, and you do that matrix multiplication, you get this. But we said under the assumption the covariance is zero. So that says this is zero. You know, these two are zero, and we're left with this. So let's let Y, oh, so just to make sure we're talking about, you know, the same thing. Y is an N by one vector y1 is an n by 1 by 1 vector and y2 would be n2 by 1 vector r1 is an n1 by n matrix right it has the same dimension the number of rows as y1 r2 has it is an n2 by n matrix so the number of rows are the same there let's let z be a 2n by 1 vector with this so there's n rows here and n rows here 
where both Z1 and Z2 are n by 1 vectors and let Z be distributed with the multivariate normal with mean 0 and variance covariance matrix I. So that instantly tells me that every component of Z is independent, right? Because all the, or let me rephrase that, has a covariance of zero. Now, where, of course, Z can be partitioned into Z1 and Z2, so that's a multivariate normal, zero, zero, and then the identity matrix for each of these subcomponents. Um, so thus, Z1 is independent of Z2. Let's let X be this matrix. We're just going to put in R and R2 and then Z is of course an n by 1 vector. I mean 2n by 1 vector, right? Yeah, because this, this one here is n1 by n, and this one is n2 by n. So the number of columns in this is 2n. So the number of rows in this has to be 2n, and it's a vector. And then the mean is mu, right? Because this the, the total number of rows here is, is n1 plus n2, which is n. And so it had, this mu is the same vector that we started with. So the expected value is you just take it into the z. That's a constant. So this is zero, and that's you know a constant. So the the mean is mu. The variance is um, we're taking the variance of x. So the matrix comes out front. Take the variance of z, and then you transpose it out back. That's this, and then that's a constant, so it doesn't factor into it. Now, the variance of Z is the identity matrix, right? So then this multiplied by that is this and goes away, so then we're left with this. Multiply this out, you get this. And we said R1, R1 transpose was sigma 1, and then that was sigma 2, so that's sigma. So now, x1, you can see, is r1, z1, mu1, and x2 is r2, z2, mu2. And you can kind of see that up here if you partition this into the, you know, in first n1 rows and n2 rows, and then you do this multiplication, then these two fall out. Okay, now a few notes. Z1 is independent of Z2, right? That's how we uh, developed that. We created those two. And also functions of independent variables are independent. So since Z1 is independent of Z2, that's a constant, this is a constant, constant, constant. It says this function is independent of this function. So that says X1 is independent of X2. Now, here, the distribution of x1, x2, or just x, you know, is, is this. It's multivariate normal with mean vector mu1, mu2, and this variance covariance matrix. But notice that x and y have the same exact distribution, right? So if we flip this to the, the previous page, that... Um, we said the variance covariance matrix was this, right, under the assumption that it's zero, and it has the same mean vector. So X and Y have the same distribution. And note the exact same distribution. So X1 and X2 are independent. So that implies Y1 and Y2 are independent. And actually, that's what we wanted to show. We assumed the covariance was zero. And we showed that that implies that the those uh, Y1 and Y2 are independent. Well, that's all I have for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. 
Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.